Ezekiel chapter 39. Therefore thou son of man prophesied against God. Is that man? So if you ever come across anybody who says, I know what the Bible completely means. I know the whole Bible. Want to tell me who Gog is? Want to tell me about his land called Magog? What the Bible says, not what you think. See, God knows things that we don't know. We can only assume it's Russia or ain't somebody like that, but we don't know. Let us say to the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God. Oh, he's a, God's against them. You mean God doesn't show this man love? You know, God loves God but hates his sin. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I, God, will turn thee back and leave but a sixth part of thee. And will cause thee to come up from the north part. And will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. All right, whoever this guy is and his armies, they're coming to Israel as an army. That's one thing settled. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand. Revelation 6 1. And will cause thy arrows to fall out of thy right hand. So he's got a weapon that God is going to render useless. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel. You're going to die on the mountains of Israel. You're not going to die in your homeland. You're going to die in God's homeland. Thou and all thy bands, this entire army, and the people that is with thee, I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort. God's going to feed his birds with his army. And to the beasts of the field to be devoured. So what the birds don't eat, all the animals in the field are going to eat. So this army you can name as Chow. Thou shalt fall upon the open field. I have spoken it, say the Lord God. If God spoken it, it's going to happen. I wonder if God's ever going to pick up a Bible one day, flipping through it. Uh, oh, there I am. Oh, if I go to Israel, I'm going to die, and the birds are going to eat. Oh, yeah, right. You wonder? It, it's told by Josephus that um, in Israel history that Cyrus was told, hey, check this out. You were in the Bible long before you were born. When God comes, here he is. He's in the Bible. You wonder that somebody's going to show him. So that means his mother would have to name this precise child precisely right by God. How's that one? He can't be a George. He can't be a Phil. He can't be a Tom. He can't be a Fred. She's got to name him God. And he's got to be a ruler of a certain nation. How's that one? Isn't God limiting his prophecy? Let me ask you, of all the names you've ever known, that people, think back all the time, as far as you can think, growing up as a child, in all the school classes you've been in, all the places you've ever been, that you've known someone's name. Have you ever met a name of somebody named God? Yeah, I can go on any one of these TV game shows. The question is, name a name of the future. God. Oh, you lose. Nope, I win. And God's prophecy is so precise, it's got to be down to one man in control of, of two nations, Meshach and Tubal. Who are those nations? We don't even know who they are. God has given us two nations and a man that we have no idea who or what they are. And yet, prophecy is said, I have spoken it, and it will come to pass. How's that one? That's like me saying right now, all right, tomorrow... Uh, December 29th, 2015, at 2 o'clock, I'm going to get hit by the number 8 bus going to blah and going to this place. It's going to be cloudy, and I just keep on adding details as God done 
about the prophecies of the 48 prophecies of the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and they happened to the 48 prophecies 100% and as those 48 prophecies came to pass 100% this prophecy about God is going to happen I rest my faith not in God I rest my faith in God And I will send a fire on Magog. Again, assume it's Russia or somebody like that, but we don't know. And among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. So there's some kind of isles out there, and they're just going to rooty tooty, have a good old time, and not care, and woohoo, entertainment, movies, and all kinds of stuff, and this woohoo, partying, mickle old time. It's time to smoke, dance, and drink, have sex, and everything like that. Uh, we have not a concern in the world. That describes most of any place in America today. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Well, that's not the time to know that I am the Lord. That's the wrong time. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Israel. How? There comes a man named God. He comes from a particular location. He comes into your land. He dies in your land. The birds and the animals are burping and pooping God. As they did Jezebel. Israel, you see that? Yeah. Open your Bibles to Ezekiel, the rolls of chapter 39. Oh my God, look at that. Now shall we look at the scripture of the Lord Jesus Christ as the Messiah? Well, I'll be. That is God. That is the Messiah. By the word of God. And I will not let them, Israel or God, pollute my holy name anymore. Israel has been polluting God's name with idolatry, with looking at the stars, with sorcery, magic, with idols in every boulevard and every street and every road and house decorates with every tree inside the house with gifts under the trees and bunnies laying eggs in the yards of children looking for them and firing off fireworks and magic shows in the churches and have a cookie and be coming to church and all kinds of goody doo doos and the, the name of God has been blasphemy among God's people Prophecy is going to end Israel's sin and look to God as who he really is. Had they really searched the scriptures as Jesus told them, they would have believed 100% and history would have been changed. But envy and anger and sin has caused them to reject who Jesus Christ was. Oh, they knew who he was. They just didn't believe it. You know how many people today go to church and know who Jesus is and just doesn't believe it? You wait to when the rapture of the church happens, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and those that remain are caught up together. How many people believe in Jesus who are not there? Your mother, your father, your children, your parents, your siblings. Oh, they spoke Jesus. They said they knew Jesus, but they never believed. As those that were in the wilderness. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord. Alright, they're going to know God by prophecy. That's one of the things I, every once in a while, I try to throw when I'm witnessing to somebody, when I'm preaching in the street, to show that God is a God of prophecy. And he hits it 100%. Because you know what? When I tell you, if you do not receive Christ as your Savior, you're going to hell, I am prophesying. By what the Bible tells me. And what's the heathen going to know? The Holy One in Israel. All the world will know that Israel is God's people and God is of Israel. Is that today? Do you dare stop any Muslim right now and dare ask them the question uh, uh, which God is God? Allah. <clears throat> there you got it wrong. Can't ask you question number two. Which God, does, which nation does God prefer above all nations? 
Oh, what? It's the Muslim. <clears throat> You're wrong. Want to try that with any religion? Those two questions? You ask the Roman Catholic, who's God? Mary. <clears throat> who's that one church of all the church in the world? The Catholic Church. <clears throat> You're wrong. For there's coming a time by prophecy that all the world will know that God is God and his people are the Jews. Behold, it is come. It is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day wherein I have spoken. God's right, and it's right now, and it hasn't happened yet. You see how sure God is about his word? It's already happened. Paul and the apostles wrote in their right that the day, the coming of the Lord is a short time. It's really been a long, short time. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel, Israel, shall go forth. And shall set on fire and burn the weapons. Oh, my gun control. Can't take my, imagine, here's the Jews <clears throat> taking weapons. And if it was today, they'd be crying, oh, you're taking my weapons, confiscating my weapons, you liberals. Taking your weapons is a Bible doctrine. And both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, the hand staves, these are all weapons. These are all defensive items in fighting. And the spears, and they shall burn them with fire. How many weapons are there? Seven years. That's a lot of weaponry. You know what? This is prophecy, right? Now, I'm going to lay something on the line. This is my own thinking. You can throw it in the garbage. If you pick up a gun today, you can't. There's only very little wood on it. Most of it's metal. Metal don't burn. Now, are we going to be going in the future where we're going to go backwards into wooden weaponry again? Unless they're going to come up with wooden guns, I, I doubt that. But a metal gun, now the bullets will burn, not long. They go, poof, that's it. But these weapons will burn for seven years. Exactly what that is, I don't know. But I don't, I don't see a gun in it, and I could be wrong. But that's got to be, I know one thing, that's got to be a whole bunch of weaponry if you're going to burn them for seven years. That's a long time. So that they shall take no wood out of the field. Neither cut down any out of the forest. How many weapons are there? They're not, they're not going to get any more firewood. You're not going to go to the field to the wood pile. You're not going to go into the forest to cut a tree down. You're going to use your weapons for seven years. No trees. Oh, the tree huggers will love that. The tree huggers are dancing around the trees while the guys with their weapons are crying. <laughs> oh, they saved the small off and they took my gun. <laughs> for they shall burn the weapons with fire. And they shall spoil those that spoil them. This is Israel. They're going to go to those nations that have been taking them and rotting them and robbing from them and stealing from them and taking advantage of them. And they're going to return the, fla the favor to them, Galatians 6, 7. And rob those that rob them, saith the Lord God. God says, you know what? Israel is going to take advantage of you one day. And one day you're going to have a seven-year fire with all your weapons in Israel. Now I know there's a period in the Revelation where a third of the trees are gone. Now they're taking the other part of the trees that have not been gone or been gone before those third of the trees and been using them for warfare. Uh, Revelation 5 or the six, where that second horse comes in with war, and it shall come to pass in that day, I will give unto Gog a place there of graves in Israel. It's going to be a graveyard for Gog. 
in the valley of the pastures on the east of the sea. Now the east of the sea, well it can't be the Mediterranean Sea because east of the sea would be the Atlantic Ocean. Sea of Galilee, the Dead Sea, it's got to be a piece of land to the east of this sea. You were to look at a map of the area. And it shall stop the noses of the passengers. Now what's that mean? There's going to be so much dead bodies there and decaying. And the Bible put corruption. Phew. Methane. There shall they bury God and all his multitude. How many are there? It's going to cause a big stink in the land. And we're not done yet. And they shall call it the valley of Haman God. Where is that going to be? It will be on a map one day. Just whip up your nose. Seven months shall the house of Israel, the Jews, be burying of them, that they may cleanse the land. Numbers 19, 16 to 32, Deuteronomy 21, 23, were laws about touching the dead being unclean and needing the water of separation I was it that it was the red heifer see it didn't say they could not touch dead bodies it would say they were unclean by the dead body and they would have to do a Samaria a Samaria can't say ceremonial with the water of cleansing I believe it was seven days of washing. So guess what? The law is coming back. The law is back in Ezekiel 39. To cleanse the land. That tells you right there you're under the law. These people come in the land and dying. Ooh, you talk about a cleansing the land. They're stinking the land. Yay. All the people of the land shall bury them. All the Jews. And it shall be to them a renown the day that I shall be glorified, say the Lord God. <clears throat> sort of like the day that Esther proclaimed in the death of Haman. What did it say? The valley of what? Okay. Esther proclaims a feast. Here's a great day, a holiday. That I shall be glorified. A holy day. Never mind holy day. Holy day has I in a minute. Holy day has God in it. That God has wrought victory over their enemy. And they shall sever out men of continual employment. Oh, job opportunity in the Bible. Passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face here. You're traveling along, you're walking along, you're going somewhere. All right? And you got people with you. To bury with the passengers. You're traveling with people. Those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search. So you're, you're traveling through Israel and you find a dead Gagite, Magadite, Mishramite, Jubalite. You, you know what you do? You get out of your wagon, you get off your camel, and you bury it to cleanse the land. And the passengers, people going by, that pass through the land, when any seeth a man's bone, then shall he set up a sign by. There's a sign. You want you care to smash? You want a sign? You're traveling on, you know, you're on your ass, you walk by, you see a bone on the ground. You get out, you get yourself a wooden stake, and, a, and you put up, I don't know if you draw a picture of the bone, or you put bone, or whatever you put, but you put a sign by that bone. That he shall set up a sign by it, till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Haman God. There will be people going through Israel, whose job is, oh, there's a sign over there. Come on, boys, get your shovels. Let's bury this. All right, let's go through the land again. Make sure it's all. And also the name of the city shall be Hamanas. The multitude. Thus shall they cleanse the land. 
Thou son of man. Thus saith the Lord God, speak unto every feather. Uh, you just picture Ezekiel now here. He gets himself a bag of corn. He just spreads it out in the seed. He gets all the birds. All right, birds, we're going to have a little meeting right here. Settle down. Speak unto every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field. What a commission. Assemble yourselves and come. God's calling the birds. It's like Mark saying, go eat all the world and preach the gospel. Ezekiel's telling all the birds and the animals, come gather, gather, gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you, the birds and the animals. Even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. So Ezekiel speaks up, gets out his, his role and says, you birds and you animals over there, go ye in all the mountains of Israel and come and dine. The master calleth, come and dine. How's that? Ye shall eat the flesh of mighty, drink the blood of the prince of the earth, princes of the earth, of rams and lambs, and of goats of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. Now here's all their, their, we call it, here's their transportation, here's their portable kitchens, here's everything they got given to the birds and given to the bees. Hey, you're going to have a bunch of fat birds that won't be able to take off after this. And what do they leave behind? The bones. And what do you do with the bones they left behind? You put a sign by it, and a guy will come along and bury it. You shall eat fat. Now that was forbidden for the Jews. And we're not talking about, we're talking about the animals and birds. But that was forbidden by the Jews, for the Jews. Till ye be full. And drink blood till you be drunken. That don't mean the birds are like, <coughs> Just drink it till you have been completely full of liquid. Of my sacrifice, God's sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you, men who will not obey God, he turns over to the animal. So what are most of your horror stories about? Raven animals that are going after men and devouring them. Have you read what, what Revelation says about those horsemen? The scorpion tails and all that. Animals are going to go rapid in the near future. They're going to go crazy in the near future. If it's not already happening now. Thus shall you be filled at my table. Read that in a church. With horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, army, marines, navy, military, saith the Lord God. And remember, he's preaching to the birds and he's preaching to the animals. And God sets up a table for them in the wilderness. And I will set my glory among the heathen. And all the heathen shall see my judgment. That I have executed. What a great word to use. That, you know, it's illegal to execute. It's not right to execute. God said execute. And my hand that I have laid upon him. You know what those Gentiles are going to look? They're going to see a, woo -wee, Don't mess with that God. Mr. Jew, will you tell me how to properly serve your God? And that's what they'll be doing to millennium. They'll be back, the Levites will be back doing the priestly offerings to the Lord Jesus Christ. Guiding the nations with the twelve apostles, with the, those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, the church, and the Lord Jesus Christ sitting in Jerusalem on the throne of David, guiding everyone and all what God expects. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord, their God, from that day and forward. That hasn't happened yet.
from the time of 70 AD to whenever this happens, do you know what's happened to the Jews? And they still don't know God as God. And God knows them. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Because they trespass against me. Therefore hid I my face from them. And gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. You know why they end up in Babylon? For their iniquity. You know why they're all over the world today and not in their homeland? Because of their trespasses. Sin has brought Israel in the condition that she is now. One day God says, I will forgive all their sin. I will cleanse them of all their iniquity. I will give them a new heart. I will give them my spirit. And they'll never have iniquity. And they'll never transgress against God again. According to their uncleanness. And according to their transgressions. That's why. Read Deuteronomy 31, 16-18. Have I done unto them and hid my face from them? Sin, iniquity, trespassing, uncleanness, transgressions will have God turn his face from you. Even though you're still his people. Therefore thus saith the Lord God. Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob. And have mercy upon the whole house of Israel. And will be jealous for my holy name. Israel will be restored and converted. After that they have borne their shame. And all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me. When they dwell safely in their land. That's not today. And none made them afraid. That is not today. That wasn't David's time. David, you hear the Philistines are coming? Uh-oh. When I have brought them again from the people. Sure wasn't during Solomon's time either. Man, he was oppressing the people with taxes. It got so bad when Rehoboam came to the throne. They were like, please, please, relieve us. Your father treated us wickedly. When I have brought them again from the people. And gather them out of their enemies' lands. And, and am sanctified in them. In the sight of many nations. So there's going to be still nations around. But it said many nations, not all. The same many that will go the broad way. But few that will go the right way. Not all. God, the Lord Jesus Christ died for all, but many will turn away. There are all nations, but many at this point will see Israel get right. Not all. They shall know that I am the Lord their God, Israel, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. God caused it, but they did the sin. But I have gathered them unto their own land. And have left none of them any more there. Where? In the other lands of captivity of the heathen. It's going to be a day when all the Jews will be in their land and nowhere else. You couldn't even find that in Paul's time. He goes to Rome. He ran into Jews. He goes into Corinth. He ran into Jews. In Galatia, there were Jews. There were Jews everywhere through the book of uh, Acts. Everywhere throughout the, the known world. One day they'll be all in their land. Neither will I hide my face any more from them. Future. Does that sound like God's done with them? Does that sound like they're going to sin again? He said over here, I sinned because I hid my face because they sinned. Their iniquity, I turned my face against them. Neither will I hide my face any more from them. There's going to be no more iniquity. There's going to be no more trespass. There will be no more uncleanness. For I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God, and 
Right now, we're done with the tribulation. The next chapters, we're going to pick up the kingdom age. We're going to see the millennium. We're going to see the future temple that hasn't even been built yet. We're going to read about it. There's going to be things in the next chapters. I have no idea what Ezekiel is speaking about. But you know what? I know personally, without a shadow of a doubt, these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I know I'm going to see this, this temple one day. Never mind Solomon's temple. Never mind the temple that Jesus walked in, that they defiled, that he had to go in there busting tables. I'm going to see the temple that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to sit in and serve God and love his people. So what we're going to read in the next few chapters, the Lord willing, we're going to read something that Christians are going to see. So it's like, wouldn't it be great to know what we're going to see, even if we don't understand what we're, going, what we're reading, we're going to see it one day. 